Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I have kind of a unique video. I'm going to share with you a historic location I recently was able to visit. I was actually on vacation and I thought, hmm, I can't be at this hotel without giving you some video of it. And it's not in my usual genre of pick me up positivity, but we are going to definitely focus on the positive and the good in this particular historic video, all right? And I am gonna channel this person. So we're gonna talk just briefly, hopefully briefly, with former president Richard Nixon. Now I know, I know, I know. This is a um, very current events, very historic time in the United States and related to current events that are going on right now in the US. It just so happened I was actually at the hotel in Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, the Contemporary Resort, right at the Ballroom of Americas, where I actually stayed at that hotel, where Richard Nixon gave his famous speech, I am not a crook, that whole speech. And I want to show you the footage of that, so I will, I'll show you the footage of the area of um, that ballroom so you can see what it looks like today here and we are going to talk now i was going to try to talk with him there but i just couldn't do it it was too it seems so weird you guys like i'm in this most magical happiest place on earth you know disney world with creativity and and positive energy and all sorts of stuff and that's like imagination and you can do anything anything's possible dreams and then totally with this energy of former president richard nixon like resigning today i am at disney world and i am at the contemporary resort and of course there's a very historic place here that we are going to visit i'm going to share with you and i don't know that it's going to inspire your spirit but it's historic okay so we are going to check out the Ballroom of the Americas. The Ballroom of Americas is famous for something in history. Richard Nixon, he gave his famous I Am Not a Crook speech here at the Contemporary Resort in Orlando, Florida. Let's take a peek. I don't know why I'm whispering. Here it is. Wow. This is the ballroom that Nixon gave his famous speech in. Isn't it awesome? How beautiful. Look at the ceiling tiles. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Look at the decor in here. Isn't it awesome? Look at the chairs and the setup. Isn't it just beautiful? Wow. Impressive. All right, guys. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. So I am going to talk briefly with former President Richard Milhouse Nixon, not to get into drama, not to create chaos, but to get us some insight, you guys, because there's some stuff going on right now in the U.S., as I've mentioned, and it would be interesting to connect with uh, Mr. Nixon and see what kind of energy he can share, some information or messages he could share with us. So let's bring him in. Yeah, he does really have like this. Oh, I don't want to be rude or impolite, but this like grumpy old man face, like really stern, kind of waxy. His physical appearance looks very tired and very worn and stressed. It looks like he's like a heavy duty smoker is what he looks like. You know, he just looks so much older than his years. And understandably, I mean, you can understand why that might be, right? Um, because of the circumstances and drama of his, his political career and, and the way he left office. So um, I don't mean to be rude, you guys, but you know, I really, I really describe things because I'm clairvoyant, so I see the spirit. And he's showing up as he did at that time. All right. And now he brings me into like this room. It looks like it might be the Oval Office. It's this big, beautiful room, like White House looking room with big, long curtains, huge rooms. So it looks like the Oval Office or an office that he used in the White House. He actually telling me, he just told me the state office building or the, the federal office building or something. There's another building that has this 
that he officed in is what he's telling me. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if they're in Congress or in on, on this, the Capitol Hill. There's another office for the president to use. There must be. But he's showing me that. And then it's like long curtains and there, there's a, like a, a, a blue, a lighter blue, thick, heavy curtain. And there's a gold. So it's blue and gold with it. But it's not a bright blue. It's a light blue, like a sky blue. That's important because color really matters a lot to me when I'm channeling because the gold is usually connected to our spirit and um, our intuition, like what we sense and know and what our spiritual purpose is. And our life purpose also could be connected with that golden yellow color and like being on path. This is on purpose. And then that blue energy is very much a truth energy. What is true, which is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because that's what we're this whole like um, the troubles that that uh, former President Richard Nixon had was all around. The blue is energy of truth, which is very appropriate here. Um, so Mr. Nixon. Yeah, and then he shows me like something he's proud of, like China working with China, trade, business. He does, there are definitely some patterns or theming between him and our, the current president of the United States, Donald Trump. And <clears throat> with that, like a business mentality or a business acumen um, and trade, he's talking about trade and trade efforts. It's a big deal for him, um, Mr. Nixon. And he's drawing that comparison to the current president, the sitting president. He says, the sitting president, Interesting, he uses the word the sitting president. Oh, okay. And at the time I'm doing this video, it's Donald Trump is the president of the US. Okay, and this video is recorded on December 15th. I should share that, 2019. Okay, so. So. Is it true that there were um, how should I say this? There was a lot of question about your mental state and your mental health and your clarity um, in the later part of your presidency, Mr. Nixon. Is that something that you would be open to speaking about, especially because mental health is a thing, a big deal now, trying to get us as a society to be more accepting and compassionate toward other people, other people because it's not really about our own selves it's about everybody else and their labels and issues right um yeah no really it's about all of us mental health is something as important as our physical health and wellness and society is kind of changing to become a culture of we're hoping for more acceptance i think most people more kindness and understanding about that and cutting slack to each other and ourselves um, so that people will ask for help instead of suffer in silence. Okay, that's my soapbox thing. But will you talk about that? And he says, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. And then he's showing me drinking like he's drinking. <clears throat> it looks like a scotch or whiskey. It's a darker colored liquid. He's drinking a lot. And he's showing me like tremors in his hands like he's shaking. And he says, I wasn't well. I wasn't well. Um, he's not suggesting that you guys as an excuse or anything to the actions or what may have taken place, but he's just saying, I wasn't well, I wasn't well, I wasn't well. A lot, a lot of stress, you guys, a lot of stress, anxiety, tension, a lot going on. Um, it looks like other people in his own party are having conversations with him to encourage him to, um, make the decision to leave office, that that would be in the best interest of everyone is how kind of, he was getting a lot of pressure is what he's showing me. He doesn't want to talk about Watergate though. He doesn't want to talk about the scandal. He doesn't want to take accountability. He doesn't want to um, defend himself. He doesn't want to talk about it. It's almost like he just, he does not want to even, doesn't want to even stir the pot is the words that the phrase that comes through stir the pot because there's not it's not he says it's not the same as what's happening in your america today it's different it's very different he says times are different times are different there's a lot that has changed in the the u.s and it's a different time it's a different time it, it's not really fair to make and it's not even adequate or um it's not an adequate comparison to make. And I'm sure there are many parallels being drawn and, and discussed in, in media and in politics and 
And yet, so many of those arguments or those things that you're seeing played out now live on television happened. It happened before as well. Time and time again, the same kind of cat and mouse game occurs. The difference is it's behind closed doors, behind closed doors. And it really is like a game, like a show. And there was always dirty laundry. There's always dirty laundry in Washington. There was, don't kid, do not kid yourself. He said, do not kid yourself. It's always been there. It's now that you're seeing it. And I'm thinking, you don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. Then don't look. Don't be looking if you don't want to know the truth. Don't look. Don't look if you can't handle it. If you can't handle knowing that it makes you feel pressure, like you have to do something about it, doesn't it? It does really put pressure. See, you see, you see most of America, they just want to be left alone. They want to be left alone to live their own lives. And then every four years go to the polls and make a vote. And the truth is, is they don't really care in the long term future of the democracy. It's just all it's all just for show. It's not, there's not really, it's a cycle, a pattern of behaviors. It's not something that idealism doesn't really thrive in the political arena. It does not, it cannot, in fact, it cannot survive it. It can't. Anyone, you show me any politician or any, any possible, possible candidate, and I will poke holes all over their idealism, their dreaming mentality and attitude will not survive. It will not. They will become hardened. They will become cynical. They will, they will understand really fast baptism by fire that in order to be successful at all, they have to play by the rules that are already existing. And those current structures are the very things that you are frustrated about, that you have felt and known for years, but care to turn a blind eye to. So you would think you would have learned something from my time, but you clearly have not. In fact, you're a glutton for punishment and want to know more, 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 more. Why? Why is that? Is that because you want to feel better about yourselves and your own miserable life and compare and sh point fingers and blame? Yes. It's because everyone in America needs a scapegoat need someone else to blame for your own unhappiness. And the truth of the matter is, is it's your own self loathing that creates the, the need to devalue others and the lack of the ability to reclaim or to lead through all of this smoke and mirrors is not an easy thing. It is a difficult thing and it's not for the faint of heart. And that's why most Americans will ignore this. They will choose not to have any kind of responsibility or accountability. And that is the word of the masses. It is, it is, it is. That's the popular opinion. Okay, I did not expect any of that, you guys. Okay, I, he needs to stop. We need to stop now. It's not that he's angry or upset or an evil person, it doesn't feel like, but he has a lot of very strong, he has a strong personality, Mr. Nixon does. And his energy feels very much um, on point as like a dominant fi figure. He doesn't feel reincarnated. He feels like, he finally has an opportunity to say, see, kind of like, see, I told you so. This is the way people are. This was happening all along and nobody notices or it happens in, in different, to different scales in, in anything, in business, in government, in healthcare, in, in politics. It happens everywhere. But when it's on the big stage and a big light is being cast on it, then it becomes a performance and both sides get, everything gets heightened and it, and it distorts the image of what's, what's truly happening. It, it distracts from the individual voters or Americans' responsibility and 
puts blame and focus outward instead of acceptance inward. And that's where the power is. And so that's where the contrast is. It's kind of coming from Mr. Nixon sharing this insight is kind of to push us on the edges. And I do agree with some of the things that he's sharing and the perspective that he's sharing it. And his, again, his personality is very bold, very dominant, but he's not trying to control. He's simply almost, it's almost like karma is what it feels like, where he's coming back to say, guess I wasn't so bad, was I, huh? You know, kind of a thing like, see, we've always been in America where there are things that are best left behind closed doors and desperate times call for desperate measures or behaviors. You behave in a way when you're feeling threatened or you're afraid and there's fear in ways that you wouldn't normally do. It's irrational, he says. It's irrational choices that are made and then there's all these cover-ups that go on. And there isn't, despite what you may think, it's conspiracy theory, is what he's saying. There's no conspiracy theory here. It's just, what is a truth? And the fact is, as in the matter of public opinion, there is no such thing. It doesn't exist. This is Richard Nixon. It does not exist. Truth does not exist. It's simply a matter of popular opinion. The majority rule. And when the majority changes, the rules change. The environment changes. Everything changes. Then it happens over and over and over again. So if you're looking for stability, forget it. You're not gonna find it out here. You can't find it in a structure or a system, even a democracy. The only place you can find that is in yourself. And that's where you need to find your own peace. You need to be able to live with yourself at the end of the day. And can you do that? If you can't, then you need to step down. And that's what I did. That's exactly what I did that has more integrity than any of the truths that you claim today. Interesting. Wow, okay, so I'm not sure you guys how this uh, channeling video with the uh, former President Richard Nixon is gonna like land for people. And I really don't want people to be fighting in the comments, but I know you guys, hmm. At Above Life Channel, I can do my best to create an environment that is positive, focused on inspiring your spirit and giving you some hope, but I also really value authenticity. And so I give it to you right here in this context. This isn't about politics. It's about people and it's about you. You as a spirit being a human. You as a spirit being a human, not your mind, not your anger, not your your limited beliefs, but about your spirit understanding. How does your spirit understand this message? What is in this for you as a soul, as a gem of wisdom? Go ahead and put your gems of wisdom in the comments below. Now, I know there will be some political banter. Ignore it, please. This is not a political channel. This is a people channel. This is for your spirit. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching this channeling session. And remember, as much as my job is to inspire your spirit, and that's my purpose, your purpose is to live your life. Because this, after all, is your life. So live it. Just live it and ignore the comments it's not worth it <laughs> thanks for watching you guys